I think both of us, our dream was, oh, to always be working as an actor. Uh, just consistently working. Hey, it doesn't have to be the highest level, but you know, continue working. But that hasn't been the case. I think what we're learning as we're getting older and, you know, uh, addressing issues of family and, and work and staying put in one city is that we're learning to kind of let go of all of our ideas about what our life should look like. For me, you know, when I did Les Mis and I, I did that right out of school and I was thinking, oh, I'm set for life. And that hasn't been the case. And, uh, you know, there's been numerous times in the past six months where I've been down to the wire for Broadway shows and they haven't panned out. I've been down to the final two, three guys and it's gone another way. And so that can be really, really frustrating if we think that, oh, for me to be successful, I have to continue to work or I have to continue to work on this, this level. And I think by the grace of God, we've done so many different things that we never knew we would be doing as artists because there's so many things that, that we can do through acting or singing, how those gifts can affect other jobs. Um, and so we're learning to let go of that and really find joy in doing whatever God's calling us to do in the moment. When I got off the, the Phantom Tour, I went through a pretty long period of, of unemployment, rejection, things like that, working miserable temp jobs. And by the grace of God, uh, I was presented with the opportunity to lead a, a Broadway Bible study in Times Square on Philippians. and. Uh, I'd never really studied scripture in that sort of depth before. And not only was I doing that to help the group grasp and understand the book, but also to figure out how it applies to, you know, musical theater actors trying to make it in the business. And I was really challenged by studying Paul because here is Paul who has been experienced the risen Christ and he's told him, go out and preach to all nations. And yet Paul is stuck in prison. And he must have felt like his hands are tied behind his back. Like, God, you told me I'm going to be going and preaching the gospel everywhere. And yet here I am stuck in jail. And yet he finds rejoicing in the fact that the gospel is still being advanced. There is a sense of openness in the theater community. The sense of, oh, you know, you believe what you believe. I believe what I believe. And the way that I kind of navigate uh, sharing who I am in fullness because my faith in Jesus Christ and what he's done for us is huge, is all of who I am. Um, I'm a pretty bold person, um, but I think I, I try to be gentle and graceful because, I've, you know, just with any relationship, any, any situation, any conversation, you know, a harsh answer can send people running, you know, and then what a what a shame, what a shame, whether it's about, you know, hamburgers and hot dogs or Christianity, <laughs> you know. Um, so I've always really felt called to, and I just, I, you know, I, I've struggled with, is this the cop-out answer? Um, or is this really what I feel called to do is to listen, to become friends first, to let there be trust first. Uh, what a novel idea <laughs> to not feel like, to not make anybody feel like I have all the answers because of what I believe in, because I most certainly don't. One of the things that God calls us to, like if I, if I read over, say, Paul's letters, like in Colossians, you see, um, in chapter three, you see him talk about a community that is defined by compassion, kindness, gentleness, patience, forgiveness. And what would it be like to, for the church community to focus on cultivating those sort of virtues? What if that, was expressed in all of our dealings with people around each other. That's actually living out the implications of the gospel is a community that is, he goes on to say, defined by love. love.